A final option that you have for charting, not final, there are all kinds of other options, but one option, that would, the final option I'm going to talk about is sparklines. Sparklines were created a couple of editions of Excel ago, and we're also going to talk about data bars in this unit, or in this recording. But what they allow you to do is basically put a chart, a very simple chart, inside of a cell. And there's a little more capability to them than that, but I think what I'm going to do is demonstrate it by graphing for each week what each region is selling. All right. So I'm going to create sparklines for this. And to create a sparkline, sparklines generally go into the same or go into the next column. So I think what I'm going to do is insert a column here. You don't have to go here. Spark lines could have gone on the end, but I think it's not a bad idea to put them in here. And then what you do is you highlight the cells where you want the spark lines to go. And so I'm going all the way down, and there's probably you could have done the shift end down arrow and be done by now, except there's nothing in that cell. It would have never ended. So now I've selected the cells where I want the spark lines to go. To insert the spark lines, Go to the Insert tab, and here there are three different kinds of sparklines. There's a line sparkline, which is just a little itty-bitty. In each one of these cells, there's going to be a line graph or a column graph. Now, the win-loss, I'm not going to demonstrate. It is used for financial stock type things to show what weeks was up, what weeks was down. It's also been used, I've seen it in... Uh, in the book where they use it for teams. Did I win the game? Did I lose the game? And you can see very quickly wins and losses. So that's something I'm not going to work on here, but it's something you can experiment with another option for sparkline. In this case, I'm going to use a line sparkline. First thing it wants to know is where's the data? All of this is my data. And then where do I want the spark lines to go in each one of the cells? This was already filled in because I highlighted them ahead of time. You click on OK, and you're done. And you notice that every single cell now has a little itty-bitty graph that demonstrates the values for each region. Now, in this case, because the values are not really over time, they're just in this week who sold what, maybe this should be a column graph. So I'm going to hide them or select them again. And go back to the sparkline design, and I can change it to a column graph. And now I can see region 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what each one of those has sold. Right. While I got this open, I can now change colors. I can use the styles and make them a lighter blue if I want to. I can change them and get even more control here all kinds of things that you can do. One of the things we might want to do is in every one of these, notice this bar is very big, this bar is very big, those represent 800s, but the scale of these is adjust. Each one of these bars scales adjust based on the data that's right next door to it. And that may not be what you want. You want all the you may want all these bars to have exactly the same scale. So I'm going to select my spark lines again. It's a little confusing because sparklines is the name of the tool, and then there are four different types of sparklines, line sparklines, column sparklines, and win-loss. I can change the axis so that the axis has the same minimum and maximum values for all sparklines. And when I do that, the graphs become, they, they reflect a little bit better what the data overall is. And let's set the maximum to the same for all spark lines. And you could see in the recording how things changed a little bit. These are big numbers. These numbers are approximately the same as those. This is very low. This is very low. Before, each was its own graph, and it was doing its own proportions, the starting number and the ending number. And if we'd had eight, 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 eight hundreds all the way across, like we almost have here, the first, the lowest 800 would have been a very, very small line. And it would have been the same size as the 300 lines down here. And so if you have a lot of these spark lines and you want them all to have the same scale, it's a good idea to, to set their scale, the axis scale, the same for all of them. 
and we can create another spark line here. One of the things to be careful of though, and tell you what, let me copy. No. One of the things to be careful of is again, don't include totals. I'm getting ahead of myself, excuse me. Now I'm going to use for these totals, I'm going to use data bars. All right, and here's my grand total out here, and it has its own. I want to see, I'm sorry, get a little confused. I want to see data bars for just the month of November. What are data bars? Data bars actually are a formatting tool that allow you to draw a column type or a bar type graph inside the cell that actually has the number. So notice what I do here. I touch them, and the biggest numbers get the biggest bars, and the smallest numbers get the smallest bars. Now, because I selected all three of those together, they get the same, they use the same scale. All three of these are using the same scale. Each of these bars all the way across is 800, 600, smallest ones are 300, and we can actually adjust the range for these as well. So I'm going to select them again. To edit the range of these, you actually have to go into conditional formatting rules, manage rules and then select your data bar and edit it. And notice the minimum and the maximum are set to automatic. And I could set the minimum, looks like the minimum, I might want to set it to 300. And the maximum I can set it to 900 or 1,000. Even though there's no thousands in here, I can set the maximum to 1,000. And a book likes to do this because then the graphs actually appear to the left of the numbers and don't overlap the numbers. That's not a bad idea. So I'm going to go to 900 and then click on OK. And notice some of these still overlap. If you're using data bars like this, these are pretty good. They show me some big numbers and these are smaller relatively numbers. Sometimes it comes in handy to actually stretch the cells so they take up maybe twice as much room and then the data bars are a little easier to see some of the differences that are behind there. Right, so here's 309, it's the smallest and I did set the minimum to 300. And if I would set the minimum to 200, you'd see a little bit more there. All right, let's undo a bunch of levels here. My data bars are gone. One thing to be careful of, and this is very common, is I want data bars for all of these, including my totals. I wanna to know for each one of the regions a bar graph that shows how what percentage each one of these is. If I add bar graphs to these, I get bar graphs in the totals, but I don't seem to be getting any for these other numbers that I had selected. Well, that's because it's treating them all as one group, all with the same scale. And since they all have the same scale, these numbers, 87,000, are huge compared to 383. If I stretch these columns again, we'll begin to see just a little bit, I'm going to make them three times as wide, that there are data bars there. Just the difference between 91,000 and 498 is so significant that you can't even see those data bars. So in this case, I wouldn't want to put them all in the same scale. So once again, I'm going to undo, and now I want to do data bars here like I had before. We'll just leave the defaults and then data graph these separately. If you do them separately, then you can control them a little bit more. All right. So now these are unaffected by the values that are in these cells. Now these data bars you can hardly see anything. Let me just double up here and double the width and see if I gain much out of it. They still all seem to be selecting the same almost full all the way across. So they're not telling me a whole lot. And that's again the range. So I'm going to go to conditional formatting. I'm going to manage the rules. And I'm going to set the rules for this one to say a minimum of, played with this ahead of time, 85,000. Occasionally you have to just experiment. And a maximum of 100. And now I get bars that are a little more reflective, plus they don't overlap my data. I could have set the max at 95. Just experiment with them until these data bars kind of say what you want them to say, or at least represent the data accurately. 
So between sparklines and data bars, imagine if the sparklines, if I wanted to graph every single one of these weeks, I'd have all kinds of sheets and I'd have all kinds of uh, bar graphs all over the place. I can do these little mini bar graphs and actually use the bar graphs to do a comparison. This was a very slow week compared to that one down there. I can tell by the bar graphs embedded in the cell. Data bars also allow you to compare values and see some trends occasionally. So those are spark lines and data lines. They can come in very handy, right? particularly if you adjust the mins and maxes so that they um, reflect the data accurately.